Okay, so hi everyone. So um, today's speaker is uh, uh, Elias Kuluridis from uh, the National Observatory of Athens. Um, so briefly uh, about Dr. Kuluridis, uh, he studied physics at the University of Patras where he stayed also to complete his PhD studies in uh, astrophysics, obtaining the PhD degree in uh, 2009. Uh, he then received one of the Greek State Scholarship Foundation IKY postdoctoral fellowship and, uh, and afterwards a three-year fellowship uh, within the framework of the action uh, supporting postdoctoral researchers to work in the National Observatory of Athens. Then from 2015 to 2019, he worked as a senior postdoctoral researcher in the Département d'Astrophysique of CEA in uh, Saclay in France uh, with the cluster cosmology group there. And then finally, <clears throat> in, two, <clears throat> in 2019, uh, he moved back to, to, to Greece <clears throat> where he joined the National Observatory of Athens and uh, he is now uh, an associate researcher there. And uh, this is it. So without any further ado, the, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carolina, for the uh, introduction, uh, introduction, and thank you for the for inviting me uh, to give this talk. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, the properties and evolution of active galactic nuclei in uh, galaxy clusters. Uh, I will uh, present uh, uh, a series uh, of um, uh, publication of results from uh, various publications that uh, we have done over the years. Um, with uh, my team, uh, with some of my students, uh, Elefte Adriga and uh, Anna Gini, and the XXL uh, survey team uh, that I was uh, before in Paris, and we still collaborate, and the Hyper Supreme CAM uh, collaboration um, uh, in the Subaru telescope. Uh, so uh, I will start uh, with a small oops, introduction. Okay, just to um, give an idea of uh, why we are doing this and the importance of uh, these uh, uh, studies of this field. Uh, so first of all, a little bit uh, about uh, cluster of galaxies and uh, AGNs. Uh, so cluster of galaxies uh, in the beginning. So as a consequence of um, the structure formation, the hierarch a hierarchical uh, structure formation, uh, the majority of galaxies uh, end up in clusters. Uh, so clusters in, in general are the principal environment of galaxies, and we know that uh, they can play an important role in uh, galaxy evolution. Uh, so uh, galaxies change a lot uh, when they are in clusters and when they are in the field. Um, in clusters, uh, in general, uh, in in general, uh, the cluster mass consists of 5% uh, of galaxies, 10% of the whole uh, intercluster medium, uh, which is very important. We will um, uh, see later uh, about these studies uh, in these studies, and 85% of uh, dark matter. And uh, when we talk about um, uh, clusters, uh, we are talking about um, uh, clusters structures of the mass of 10 to the 14 to the 10 to the 15 uh, solar masses. This is not a strict uh, threshold, okay? But uh, usually uh, we are calling clusters these uh, structures while be below 10 to the 14, uh, we are calling them groups. Uh, so usually clusters contain between 50 and 100 galaxies and the gas in the clusters, the, this hot intercluster medium, um, in the cluster gravitation potential emits in the X-rays um, because it's uh, heated to 10 to the 7, 10 to the 8 uh, uh, Celsius, uh, Kelvin, sorry. Uh, so also for supermassive black holes. Um, so supermassive black holes seems to be uh, key elements to galaxy evolution. Uh, we know now this um, uh, since many years uh, many of you may know the Magorian relation from the uh, from the 90s uh, that uh, actually there is a tight correlation between uh, the black hole and the mass of the spheroid of the galaxies. 
Uh, and this holds also in the local universe, but also in the distant universe, more or less. And uh, actually, we, know, we also know that uh, supermassive black holes uh, are actually uh, residing ev uh, almost every galaxy. And it's easier to study them when they manifest as uh, AGN. Uh, so we also have strong evidence that um, AGNs are strongly affected by their environment, even the local, either the local environment or the large-scale environment. Uh, although this is really complicated, as it seems, and uh, we, we haven't reached, uh, reached, uh, reached yet a comprehensive um, understanding of uh, how this happens. Uh, so clusters are the largest gravitational bound systems in the universe. Um, uh, we think that they are ideal uh, laboratory to study the effects of uh, dense environment in the triggering and the evolution of the uh, of uh, AGNs and to study AGN demographics uh, in this environment. So what do we know so far? Uh, so, uh, several studies till today, they have shown that uh, massive clusters can effectively suppress the fraction of AGN in cluster galaxies. Uh, so here uh, you can see an example of um, su such results from Ehlert et al. 2013-14. Although there are other results, uh, I, I just uh, noted some here. Um, so you will see a lot of these plots during this uh, talk. So, um, uh, here in the x-axis, uh, you see uh, this is the, the distance from the cluster center. So here is the cluster center in, at the zero point. And then you go towards uh, the outskirts. Uh, here is the fraction of AGN Hello. in cluster. Kalla, how are you? Uh, uh, is somebody talking? <laughs> okay. Yes, one second. So okay. <laughs> here, here is uh, the fraction of AGN in cluster uh, galaxies. Uh, so as we see here that um, the AGN fractions, uh, the AGN fraction is um, uh, getting suppressed and it's uh, lower and lower as we go towards the center of, uh, of a cluster. And actually it goes, um, uh, it's lower than the field fraction, which is this uh, line, um, the dust line uh, here. Um, so I don't know, can you see my mouse in the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, so. Uh, okay, so as an important note, uh, I put here because uh, sometimes there, there are misunderstandings, the AGN in cluster galaxies are more numerous than in the field. So we find more AGNs. If we count them, uh, we see more AGNs, X-ray AGNs, mostly uh, in, uh, in around in clusters, right? But if you correlate them, uh, if you find the fraction of these uh, uh, AGNs in cluster galaxies, okay, which are far more in uh, in clusters, then the fraction is lower at the center, okay? Uh, another interesting uh, result, uh, another interesting thing that we have uh, found, um, uh, and it is uh, that there is an excess, uh, contrary to the suppression of AGN activity at the center of clusters, there is a, an excess of uh, AGNs in the outskirts. So this was shown in some uh, studies. There are not so many, but uh, mm -hmm. here you see some examples from uh, Ruderman and Ebeling 2005, uh, who found uh, this success in the outskirts and uh, of, of only the relaxed clusters, and this is uh, important. Also, Fassbender in different redshift range, uh, ranges and masses. Um, also here, some excess of X-ray point sources. And uh, in a work that we did some uh, years ago, also you can see here an excess in the outskirts of uh, clusters. Uh, all these uh, studies, uh, usually they have different measures of the distance from the cluster center. So here is uh, megaparsecs, here are at minutes, 
And uh, we tend to use the R500 radius or some radius, some physical radius like the, uh, the R500. We think that this is important because this is a physical radius that uh, correlates to the, to, the, to the properties of the cluster. So uh, let's say the R500 is a radius which contains uh, a mass uh, that um, <clears throat> equals uh, to the mass that we find if we set the density, uh, it's 500 times, uh, if we set the density to the critical density, uh, to the critical uh, density um, uh, in that redshift. Uh, so, and this is important and uh, you will see why uh, later. Uh, so most of these results that show this uh, excess in the outskirts uh, were found in the X-rays. Um, but we have similar, some similar results lately also uh, in the optical, uh, in other wavelengths and uh, in the optical mostly. Um, so I'll, I will show you here this uh, result from Stro et al. 2021, uh, who found actually uh, here is the AGN fraction um, in, um, in relaxed clusters again. And uh, he showed that this fraction in the outskirts it's uh, it's it's ri rising, okay, and it reaches the field fraction, which is here with the gray colors, okay. While it's lower than the field fraction uh, at the center, going towards the center of the of the cluster. Uh, so this is for the agents in again in the relaxed uh, clusters. Uh, other studies in the optical in the mid infrared also show in the optical, uh, this uh, suppression of AGN activity uh, toward the center, the centers of massive uh, clusters. Although in the mid infrared, we see that it's uh, kind of higher, but we are not uh, exactly sure about the mid infrared uh, AGN. Uh, <clears throat> but you see that if they separate, again, uh, they're um, optically, uh, uh, detected AGN in type 1 and type 2 AGN, which type 2 are the more obscured AGN and type 1 are the unobscured AGN, they find a much more type 2 AGN than type 1, more, many more obscured AGN than unobscured AGN, which is consistent with other results that show also that compared to the field, we find much uh, many more uh, obscured AGN in clusters than in, uh, uh, in the field. Um, also, just uh, I know that uh, there, there were other studies like Martini et al. 2007 that also reported that uh, for low luminosity X ray AGNs, the host of low luminosity agents had no um, uh, optical signature, uh, no emission lines, so strong emission lines in their spectra. Uh, so you would not find them, you would never find them if you, uh, if you would search and search you were searching for them in, uh, in optical wavelengths. And also Marcian et al. more recently provided evidence that optical emission is also weaker when compared to the field agent. So now, why do we think all these uh, things happen? So first of all, about the lack of AGN, um, the low fraction of AGN in the cluster center. Uh, what we believe that happens is that uh, the ram pressure strip uh, stripping uh, from the by the hot uh, intercluster medium is enough uh, to produce this effect. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, this is because uh, if the pressure of this gas uh, is able is uh, to overcome the bounding forces uh, of the galaxy that bound the gas, then the gas is going away from the galaxy. And then you have less fuel, less material, less gas, and uh, to feed um, actually the nuclear uh, activity. Uh, so probably, as you strip, uh, you are stripping the gas, which we know that is able this this effect, the ram pressure stripping, is able to quench star formation, and especially smaller uh, galaxies, host galaxies. Uh, so if you strip this gas probably you can uh, stop AGMs from happening again and again uh, when uh, the galaxies go through the cluster potential. Uh, we should note, uh, I should note here that um, 
the Asian duty cycle is small compared to the time that the galaxy um, that it takes a, for a galaxy to go through uh, the cluster. So the cluster it may take uh, it might take more than one giga year to go through the cluster, okay, to reach the pericenter and then go back out, maybe two giga year. So in this time, uh, the AGN may happen and happen again. So if at some point you miss uh, the, the, the fuel uh, for this uh, activity, then probably you don't get the AGN. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I should also note that um, there are some results, uh, like in uh, Pogian et al. 2017, uh, who suggested that the RAM pressure stripping may actually act as triggering mechanism and not, sup um, uh, not suppression uh, for Asian activity. And uh, more recently, Peluso et al. 2022, which is um, a student of uh, Pogianti, confirmed that uh, jellyfish galaxies host a significantly higher number of Asian than similar galaxies in the field. Um, just to say that uh, probably this is uh, in contrast to previous results that I showed, because jellyfish galaxies probably represent a small fraction of the total population of uh, ramp pressure strip galaxies. Okay, that we see this, they are massive. Uh, the results that they showed uh, are for massive galaxies, and probably these massive galaxies uh, are able to retain some of the gas uh, in the center to feed at least the uh, nuclear activity. So here are some uh, spectacular images of these uh, jellyfish uh, galaxies. Uh, you see here how the gas is uh, going out of, um, of the galaxy. Here is the galaxy, okay? And you see the gas, how it's, uh, it, it is going out, but probably at the center, you can retain some gas for the aging activity. Uh, so going to uh, our work here as a team, uh, we are usually working with uh, X-rays, AGN in the X-rays. And uh, this uh, presents some advantages also for uh, clusters uh, as well as for AGN. Uh, so for the clusters, uh, the advantages is that the candidate clusters, uh, the detected clusters in the, in the X-rays are not affected by projection phenomena. So whatever sample you have, you are sure or more or less sure that uh, it contains uh, pure clusters while let's say for when you have an optical selection you may sometimes get um, some um, <clears throat> uh, structures um, some densities over densities of uh, galaxies which are not actually they may be filaments or other things and also a great advantage is that uh, by analyzing this x-ray uh, um, emission uh, you uh, you can calculate you can compute the temperature uh, you get luminosity measurements and this can you and density profiles and uh, you can use this as a proxy uh, to calculate the cluster mass which will give you then physical radius uh, the r500 that we were discussing before um, so you get also the properties of the clusters which is very important uh, and then, of course, X-ray observation provide the most efficient way for detected AGN, uh, detecting AGN when compared to other wavelengths. So we have both advantages for uh, clusters, cluster selection, and for the AGN selection. Uh, so one of the first, one of um, the earlier works um, that uh, we we did uh, we, uh, back in 2018 was in the XXL survey. Okay, the XXL survey is uh, actually the largest uh, program that XMM Newton, that uh, our telescope, uh, the European telescope uh, has done in the past. Uh, so it consists of uh, two fields of uh, 25 square degrees. Here in the image, you see one of these uh, fields. Uh, it's circle actually here, which is actually more or less the size of the moon. This is why we have the moon here, uh, is one uh, observation with XMM and it's uh, more or less 10 kilosecond. So this is a mosaic of observations. And here in this field, uh, you can see about 200 clusters, uh, which are marked with um, these uh, red circles. And this is the uh, extended emission in the X-rays. And uh, then all the rest, all the point sources, most of them, the vast majority of the point sources are AGN. Uh, so uh, we uh, 
did this, uh, we tried to uh, study IGNs in clusters in these uh, two fields. Uh, and the results are here. Uh, so what you see here again, it's a uh, distance from the center in R500 uh, physical uh, radius and the fraction of uh, AGN uh, in cluster galaxies. So you go from uh, the outskirts toward the center and we have separated our, uh, our cluster in more massive and less massive clusters. So for the most more massive clusters, uh, which are the squares here, the open squares, you see uh, what you expect, uh, we get what we expect. So um, we start from the field and we go to a lower um, fraction towards the center, while for the less massive ones, uh, we get an excess uh, in the outskirts, uh, actually between one and two or 500. Uh, and at the center, we don't get this um, uh, suppression of AGN activity. Uh, we actually have a consistent fraction with the field. Of course, the yellow bars are kind of large, but the results are um, spectroscopically confirmed. So all the cluster members uh, and the AGMs that we see here uh, in clusters between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. So this is, as we say, for this kind of study, this is more local uh, clusters. Uh, we find this excess um, also, and this suppression for the more most massive clusters. Um, but uh, what happens in higher um, uh, redshifts? Uh, is there any, an evolution? So there are various studies that showed uh, that when you go, uh, this is redshift here. So when would you go from the local universe uh, to redshift one and then high redshifts, uh, the, actually, the AGN fraction uh, rises uh, with redshift, and around redshift one, you have a turnover. And uh, when you go to proto clusters, you get even more AGNs than uh, you find in uh, from what you find in in the field. So uh, these are various studies. Here, uh, although here. This is the result from uh, the, uh, the XXL survey where we have less massive clusters. Uh, so maybe what uh, this shows is that uh, th this is not an evolution with redshift, but uh, this is something that has to do with the mass of the cluster. So here, uh, these samples are really massive clusters. Uh, and then as you go to high redshift, you get less and less massive structures, which actually are comparable uh, to groups here. Uh, so the agent fraction may not be uh, so dependent on redshift, but also, but probably on mass. But maybe there is, uh, there are other effects that uh, we should study. Okay. Uh, so what we did next uh, is to um, uh, try to study this in high redshift at redshift one, but with massive clusters, uh, which are really rare there. So what happens in this, uh, if we find these massive structures and we find only five, uh, which are the, the five most massive clusters um, detected by the Sunayev zeldovitz Planck and SPT surveys. So we are talking about masses that are more than five times 10 to the 14. These are really rare clusters at high redshift. Uh, all five clusters are, cover, are covered by deep X-ray observations. Uh, so we have uh, accurate cluster masses and physical radii. And uh, uh, th these are very well analyzed, their profile. Uh, so we selected this to do this uh, work and we select uh, and we tried to, and we computed this over density of X-ray point sources around this, um, uh, five clusters. Uh, so stacking this, um, the results uh, of these five clusters, uh, we, we see we get this um, actually surprising uh, results. So here is the, again, uh, this over density of X-ray point sources um, as you go from the outskirts to the field and at a very narrow uh, beam, not 
actually okay it's about uh, um, let's say 500 uh, uh, kiloparsec uh, wide but we find a very significant uh, excess of, uh, of x-ray point sources so we are not sure that these sources are there because this is a 2d analysis we don't have the redshift of these sources but the over density is very high and we believe that we find uh, this effect so in such a narrow uh, beam because we used uh, this very well analyzed clusters and we know exactly their physical uh, radii so there is something that happens uh, there uh, maybe it's more merging uh, maybe this is the splash back radius where uh, you have a large concentration of um, um, of cluster galaxies uh, which are also going are in the uh, are after their first pass, their first infold uh, in the cluster, and then they are concentrating in uh, this region, and they have low velocities, and maybe they interact with uh, one another, and they have we have more uh, triggering of uh, aging activity. Uh, so uh, this was a, a surprising result, and uh, we applied for time uh, with uh, VLT to uh, to get. Uh, the redshifts of uh, of these things, uh, of actually of the um, counterparts of the X-ray sources, and um, we got uh, we were granted twenty hours, but in two thousand and eighteen, but uh, because of weather conditions and then uh, because of the COVID, uh, we only got four hours, uh, and uh, this year we resubmitted uh, this proposal to get. Uh, the results from uh, that redshift. We need a large telescope to do this because it's redshift uh, one. Uh, but we really need to confirm if this is a real effect, what, ha what is happening there, because also a colleague here um, analyzing uh, simulations found that there is a possibility, there is um, a 10% uh, probability uh, that this can be uh, just a random effect. However, even if you take one by one uh, these five clusters that we analyzed, we see uh, this um, significant excess at least in three of them. Okay, and all the five of them produce then uh, this uh, very high excess. Uh, then what uh, we are doing now, we are ready to submit another uh, work uh, that uh, the idea started uh, just a couple of years back when we saw uh, a sample a, a cluster sample uh, that was uh, again x-ray detected of x-ray detected sub um, clusters in the locus uh, survey uh, but um, for these clusters uh, they were in narrow uh, redshift beam between uh, 0 0.16 and 0 0.28 something like that uh, in in the more local universe but we had information about the dynamical state uh, about um, their uh, their mass a very well uh, 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 computed mass and uh, also very important uh, we had information about the infalling uh, groups uh, in the cluster so we had uh, here you see an image you have the, the at the center you have the cluster and then around you have other structures smaller structures which are groups that are infalling um, in uh, this cluster. So we had uh, some of them, you can see here on the table, some of them had infalling uh, structures, some of them not. Uh, so the idea was to study all these things separately uh, to see if the mass uh, plays an important role, if uh, the dynamical state in, uh, plays an important role, or, or, or if infalling mass uh, in falling uh, groups uh, play also an important role because there is also a scenario which says that uh, there is pre-processing of uh, the galaxies uh, that fall into the cluster so AGNs may be introduced in the cluster uh, through the filaments through these infalling groups where we know that there in the groups we may have higher AGN activity because of interactions uh, so these are infalling in the cluster, uh, what we see. 
So we also, a most uh, uh, very important thing is that 90%, we had 90% complete spectroscopy of cluster galaxies uh, with hectospec. Uh, for, so almost for, for every AGM cost. So the results uh, are summarized here. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you see uh, our results are in red, okay, and we compare with the literature. So for these massive clusters, for these 20 massive clusters, uh, you get in the outskirts, uh, you are in the field uh, value. This is with the gray, uh, you see the field agent fraction. So you get a fraction consistent with the field in the outskirts. And as you go toward the center of the cluster, uh, you get lower uh, agent fraction, which is actually consistent uh, with previous uh, published uh, results. Here I just uh, put some, but in general, you have seen more um, before. Uh, then it, I also compare with uh, what I showed you before from the XXL survey, and I divide um, the cluster samples in uh, various mass beams. And uh, actually you see that uh, above 10 to the 14, uh, and for all masses above 10 to the 14, the results are more or less consistent uh, with black, red, and blue. You have field, field value in the outskirts and lower than field value at the center. While if you go to groups, which are lower than 10 to the 14, uh, you will have a, an excess uh, in the outskirts and, and more or less, uh, more or less consistent uh, fraction in, uh, at the center. So the mass may uh, probably plays a role, uh, but only when you separate groups and, uh, and clusters all together. So in the groups, uh, you will get more AGMs and especially in, uh, in the outskirts. And probably this happens uh, before you, uh, because you don't have this high velocity dispersion of the, of the galaxies like you have in, uh, in clusters. So you are able to have more interactions, uh, especially in, uh, in the outskirts. Uh, then we also separated um, uh, the, the, uh, the samples in uh, the ones that have in falling groups and the ones that don't. And uh, we get these results, uh, which show actually nothing. Uh, we have no difference uh, if uh, there are in polling groups or not. Uh, the fraction is the same, uh, even in the outskirts or at the center. And then uh, we went also to, uh, to see if uh, the position, the positions of uh, the X-ray detected um, uh, groups, which are with um, these white circles here, these are two examples, uh, correlate in any way with the position of uh, AGNs. Um, so we find that they do not, actually, we have find no evidence of some um, correlation. Uh, but this is not unexpected uh, since uh, there are results that show that um, actually uh, groups are um, uh, taken apart uh, shortly after they enter uh, the gravitational potential of the cluster. Um, and uh, probably the members are uh, are going their own way, and but surely it, we don't see the agents in the same uh, position with um, in falling uh, groups. Uh, probably the most interesting result is uh, in this uh, plot where we separate uh, based on the dynamical state. So we separate cool core, uh, cool core clusters, which are actually the relaxed ones, uh, the, the relaxed clusters. They correlate cool core, cool cores with um, relaxed and uh, non-cool core clusters uh, as the unrelaxed. So here we see a significant difference. Uh, actually, we detect most of our uh, AGN, X-ray AGNs in the outskirts. We detect them in uh, the relaxed uh, clusters. And uh, this is why I was telling you to note that also there are uh, consistent results in the past uh, where uh, also in the optical, but also in the X-rays, uh, they were finding uh, some excess uh, of AGN all, only in the relaxed clusters. Uh, 
Um, so um, this is probably again something that uh, shows that probably AGNs and the relax clusters they had more time uh, to go through their first infall, uh, go through the peri um, through the pericenter of their orbit, and uh, go back probably uh, near the splash back uh, radius, and there you have a higher concentration, and you may have. Uh, more interactions there, while at the center, uh, you have the suppression of um, AGNs due to, due to ram pressure stripping, while you may also have some triggering because at the center, the ones, the, at least this AGN that we find in the center, um, usually they have high velocities, okay, compared to the cluster, so they are uh, in their first infall, they have an increased velocity, so the mass is going out and probably um, uh, gas is going uh, pressed toward the cluster center. And then you may have this um, triggering of, um, uh, of AGN activity as they showed in Jellicus uh, galaxies. Uh, so we also, since we, uh, we were lucky to have uh, good uh, data uh, for to do the morphological classification. Uh, so we had uh, HST uh, in some uh, cases at the central regions, and uh, we have uh, we had hyper supreme cam uh, also eight meter telescope super telescope images, and for the rest uh, we had uh, the normal pan stars or um, dark energy survey images so just to to see what are the morphologies of the hosts of uh, these X-ray AGNs. Uh, so we see that in many cases, we have strange things, okay? We don't have the hosts are not uh, the usual uh, cluster member galaxy, the, the elliptical cluster member galaxy. We see here some um, spiral uh, and probably some uh, spiral morphology with some irregularities, very dusty. Uh, galaxies, and we see very regular morphology. This is uh, probably a merger, okay? Probably you see here the two nuclei merging. You see here other things. Here is a candidate for a ram pressure stripped uh, galaxy. The center of the cluster is actually um, aligned uh, to this um, uh, feature here. And you may also see some, this is the aging galaxy at the bottom of this image, this HSC image, and you probably see interaction between these, uh, interaction between these galaxies. So uh, indeed, we see that most of the, um, uh, of uh, aging hosts, especially in the outskirts, uh, at least many of them, the ones that we could uh, actually uh, classify their morphology, uh, they may have uh, irregular morphologies, they may be interacting, they may be, have uh, merging, uh, they, may, they may emerge. Uh, and so this supports our, uh, uh, the rest of our results. Uh, so what we have now for uh, the future, actually this is uh, now ongoing. Uh, 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 this is a, a, co a collaboration that we have with the Hyper Supreme Cam uh, mounted on the Subaru 82.0 meter uh, optical telescope. So this is a joint project uh, um, that uh, Eleftheria Driga is leading, uh, a student of uh, PhD student here at the National Observatory of Athens. Um, so here we have uh, this Hyper Supreme uh, Supreme Cam survey covered the XXL, uh, the northern uh, field of the XXL. So we have 25 square degrees, which are common. And um, <clears throat> we have great data there to uh, classify the galaxies that we find in the outskirts and in the center of, uh, of clusters. Um, so again, uh, I know that this is uh, work in, uh, in, pro in progress. Uh, this, this is just uh, the redshift distribution of um, of the clusters and this is the mass distribution of the clusters you see that half of our sample here belongs to groups and the rest are uh, actual actually massive clusters and again 
uh, we have great images uh, from uh, HSC. Here you see some uh, example of, uh, examples of uh, these images. Um, so these are examples of uh, sources that we found to be uh, some uh, interacting or, or, or having some uh, irregular morphologies. And actually the, uh, uh, an interesting uh, result that I will show you now is that um, the merging fraction in uh, AGNs in, in these clusters, it's higher than um, what we find in the control samples uh, for these uh, studies that are in one side are AGN from the field samples. So these are X-ray AGNs and the host of X-ray AGNs, but in the field. And also galaxies in the cluster, which have the, the same stellar masses, the same um, uh, more or less properties with the AGN host, but they do not host AGNs. So the merging fraction uh, is actually uh, higher. And uh, this is, these are results from an automate, uh, automatic algorithm that finds the, merging, uh, the mergers. And this is from um, a smaller sample, but uh, with a visual um, inspection of the sample. Uh, actually here we find a, a bit higher fraction as well, because there are, we found some examples like this one on top, uh, where we actually see uh, a merger, a compact merger, uh, which the automatic algorithm does not classify as one. So we found some of these cases which were, uh, which actually um, give some uh, highest fraction uh, from the visual inspection. But in any case, uh, this is an interesting result that indeed there is more merging in clusters uh, than in, um, uh, in the field. Uh, we also had uh, we also have uh, spectroscopy uh, also from SDSS and from other sources. Uh, here you see uh, some narrow line emission um, um, uh, galaxies, uh, AGN hosts here, and here is an example of a broad line uh, AGN um, at red point three, and uh, these are amazing uh, images if you compare with the SDSS uh, uh, images and we also analyzing them uh, we are analyzing their x-ray spectra uh, to confirm uh, the, the obscuration and to see um, if there is any correlation between obscured and obscured if we also find this lack of unobscured sources uh, in uh, galaxy clusters that will also support this merging scenario um, and this interaction scenario, because probably merging also introduces some more obscuration uh, in the in galaxies. Uh, so, and indeed, some also preliminary results show here that uh, AGN in clusters. Uh, these are with the red, uh, this orange color. We have the narrow line AGN, and uh, with. Uh, or the broad line AGN, and you see that uh, compared to the control uh, sample, uh, the AGN in clusters have are uh, have a larger fraction of uh, narrow line AGN uh, in the optical classification, uh, which again it's in agreement with uh, some previous uh, results. So uh, finally, and uh, I will just another two slides, and I will uh, close here. Um, this is something that we want to start now. So since we have seen that um, uh, dense, the dense environment of, um, of clusters indeed uh, plays an important role uh, for aging activity, but in a complicated way actually. So there is some effect uh, for sure. Um, there is a dependence on the mass because the mass uh, the mass plays an important role in the heating of the gas. So the, 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 the more massive the cluster, the, it's, uh, high, uh, it's, the temperature is higher. Uh, so probably the ramp pressure stripping at the center of the cluster is higher. And you see uh, these results. Also the velocity dispersion is higher in, massive, in more massive clusters. Also the dynamical state uh, plays a role. Uh, probably there is a redshift evolution of uh, this um, uh, phenomenon. Uh, so 
the position of uh, the galaxy and the mass of the galaxy also plays a role because the mass of the galaxy also correlates with the RAM uh, pressure stripping. If a galaxy will be stripped or not, um, it is, uh, depends on the mass of the galaxy. So it's a complicated uh, matter, which uh, needs a high, um, probably larger samples. Um, so what uh, we are gonna do, we have, um, we are planning to do now, uh, we are starting. We have a large X-ray selected um, uh, cluster catalog of uh, more than uh, 1,600 uh, clusters from redshift 0 to redshift 1.5. So all redshifts from massive uh, to very low mass to groups, from massive clusters to groups um, with various dynamical uh, states. This is a very well um, uh, selected sample. Most of these uh, clusters are spectroscopically confirmed and the rest have very good photometric um, redshifts. Uh, they are found all around uh, uh, the sky. Of course, uh, with this sample, uh, we do a, uh, a number of other studies, but this is about also uh, about AGNs. Uh, so our plan is to start working on this, uh, start finding um, uh, the AGNs, the X-ray detected AGNs, the optical AGNs, and to compile uh, probably the largest um, uh, catalog that um, uh, of, for these studies that will give us uh, uh, a comprehensive image, a picture of uh, what is going on in uh, clusters. So I think that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention and for the invitation once again. And uh, please feel free to ask me anything. Thank you very much. Thanks, Elias, for the nice talk. So is there any question? Vasilis, yes. Yeah, Ilya, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting talk. I was just uh, wondering a bit about, uh, I may have slip, missed uh, one of your slides. When you were discussing about the groups and uh, the infall of the groups and how you see a difference in the AGN fraction in the groups at the outskirts, right? Uh, yeah. So in essence, uh, the I presume the conclusion is that uh, since the groups are further out, they the fact that they happen to be associated with a cluster, it, it has no effect on them, right? Because if they, their behavior is similar to the AGN fraction you see in other interacting samples. Because you made you made the argument, you know, that the velocity dispersion is low is is well, low, yes. Is low just because of the fact they just feel the neighboring gravity, right? Uh, you mean, uh, you mean about uh, you are talking about the cluster, the the small groups that uh, enter in well, the yeah, in enter cluster, the cluster, yeah, which enter the cluster, uh, yeah, probably when uh, when they enter the cluster, uh, probably they uh, they are taken apart. Uh, so we don't find any correlation there with a we don't find any EGN, very few. In this, uh, within this structure, within this X-ray detected uh, uh, groups. Groups. Uh, so yeah. And, and how do you know that they are groups? Do you have uh, uh, you have they velocities have, for all of them? Yes, I, I mean they they have. We have the masses. They have um, computed the masses from the X-ray profiles. The X-ray profile so of the group. Of the groups, of the groups, so they measured the X-ray. I don't know how well it is uh, computed because, it, but they have good measurements. I mean, uh, they and they are all below ten to the fourteen. They have some masses two, three times ten to the thirteen. So they are. Um, we assume that these are uh, small groups. So these are, in a sense, condense. These are uh, in the X-ray images. These are PR as. Uh, a structure in the X-ray, X-ray image, which is also associated with some galaxies. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Visible they are in also, Yes, yes, yes. They are confirmed uh, by um, so, uh, by optical galaxies. So they mm -hmm. have the redshift because they have redshifts for almost ninety percent of the cluster members. So they are confirmed uh, groups in um, uh, in clusters, and they have the X-ray profile. Here is the image. So they have uh, the X-rays. And they compute some masses. So you see here, four times ten to the thirteen, seven times ten to the thirteen, okay. three times ten to the thirteen. So these are uh, uh, smaller groups uh, within the gravitational potential of the of the large group. Okay. And you see no excess of agents in those. No, I uh, actually I, I find. Yeah, I find the opposite. I mean, uh, AGNs sometimes are uh, on the other side of the of the infold. I see. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, and uh, but do you, so is the do you presume that these groups have already gone through the cluster at least once, so they have felt the effect? Probably not. Probably not. Probably. But um, there are simulations that show that. Uh, very uh, a very large fraction of groups survive the first infall the the first i mean uh, the, the pericenter the first passage yes. so so okay. probably these are infalling now yeah uh, so we see them in x-rays still uh, but I, I cannot correlate them with um, the agn um, the x-ray agns okay thank you very much Yes, Andreas. Uh, yes, Leah. Uh, thank you for this uh, very interesting uh, uh, exploration of what's happening in clusters. Uh, you made the point about uh, a ramp espresso stripping uh, playing a major role. And I was wondering, uh, what is the role of galaxy morphology, like dynamical processes that are happening in the galaxy as they merge? And then effectively they transform the gas into stars and, and so on. And so you, you transform a spiral galaxy to an elliptical. So is there any, have you checked uh, what is the fraction of elliptical galaxies uh, as a function of the radius of the cluster and whether that is uh, correlates cl more closely to the fraction of AGN? So, <clears throat> um... Yes, I mean, in this, uh, in we are doing this now uh, for uh, for this work that we are doing in XXL. Uh, we are also looking at the morphologies, okay, uh, of um, in general of these uh, clusters of this um, of these hosts. So indeed, we find that the hosts are more um, uh, spirals have more spiral uh, morphology than uh, it was supposed to be in, uh, if you account for uh, how many uh, ellipticals you, you see in the right. clusters, okay? Uh, so indeed the morphology is more elliptical, but this is in agreement with the fact that probably most of these uh, X-ray AGNs, especially the ones that you find close to the centers are uh, before uh, their first pericenter. So they are in their first infall, they have high velocity dispersions, um, and probably they are still not yet uh, transformed to ellipticals. They have not um, gone through this um, uh, process. Also, uh, what I haven't mentioned, these are uh, some details. Uh, at the centers, you don't see so much uh, this merging, okay, that happens probably in the outskirts. Exactly. Uh, yep. You see, you see more or less uh, uh, isolated uh, galaxies. Sometimes, indeed, they have these spiral morphologies, or uh, they may uh, they may have this jellyfish morphology. I don't know. I didn't find any. Um, <clears throat> but uh, these have uh, large velocities, which shows that uh, they are in their first infall. They have high velocities. The highest velocities, the, the higher velocities they have is the ramp pressure stripping. They feel more the, the ramp pressure stripping. And probably this is what triggers uh, AGN and not merging. Uh, 
in at the center, in the center, near the center. No, no my question is, is slightly different though, is uh -huh. uh, what is the cause of quenching the galaxies from the gas? Is it the transformation from a spiral to an elliptical or around pleasure stripping? Well, probably it's, it's both, but um, <clears throat> uh, okay, the transformation from a spiral to elliptical usually happens uh, after merging, right? Yep. After merging. Uh, and, and as you showed, many of these galaxies are actually merging. Are actually so, merging, yeah. So, so the question is, when you get closer to the center where you have a deficit of AGN, you have when you have fewer AGNs, which indicates is, is consistent with the fact that you have less gas. So the deficit of the gas, is it the result of ram pressure stripping or is it the result of, of the uh, transformation? The transformation? Exactly. And, and possibly a way to check that is whether you have the fraction of spirals to ellipticals goes hand in hand with a fraction of AGN to non-AGN galaxies. Right, right. This is a this is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is something that uh, we can do uh, because yeah, it will give us this uh, answer. I do think that probably it's both. Uh, so ram pressure stripping is normally happens to all galaxies so going in there. But uh, maybe also the transformation. Yeah, it's uh, thank you for this um, uh, comment. Yes, it's uh, something that we should check. Okay. Mm, any other question? Well, meanwhile, I, I also have a question from a non expert. So when you when you talk about this uh, fraction of uh, uh, agent in the in the center over the the outskirt in uh, in groups uh, of what number we are talking about? What number of AGNs? Yes. What what is the typical number you are talking well, about? Well, uh, usually where uh, the numbers are very low, uh, so. Uh, in in many cases we find no agents in uh, in clusters so this is uh, this is why we need large samples uh, so the typical uh, number of agents that we study in this uh, is between 30 and 50 so these are the numbers so, these are sorry for group or for groups the one in group for groups for groups and clusters in uh, and both in they, they are sim okay so uh, in general you get a few um from zero to just a couple of agents per cluster from either at the center or in the uh, in the outskirts um in some cases uh, in some very massive clusters like this one like abel 1835 you see, we got a few more, uh, two, uh, two, six, uh, seven uh, AGN in the outskirts. But this is an exception. Usually you get one, two, or even zero. So you need, first of all, to add up, to add uh, the, the, the different clusters. And this is why it's uh, important to have the physical, radi uh, the, the physical, physical radius, because you need to know if some AGNs are in the center or in the outskirts, and the center and the outskirts, uh, depending on the depends on the mass of the cluster, and it can be from 500, from 300 kiloparsecs to 100 megaparsecs. So you don't know what is the radius, and you may, you you should add up the AGNs that uh, make sense. Um, but usually you need to have. I mean, from this uh, sample, for example, that we had 20 cluster, very massive clusters, we got around 30 AGNs. So this is a typical uh, number. The statistics are not great, <laughs> but uh, we're trying. And and this, uh, sorry, if I may, another question. These uh, are 500 scales more or less in the same way in groups and uh, and cluster i mean is uh let's say is yes 
Okay, thanks. Yes, more more or less, it um, it scales this, yeah the same way. Thank you very much. So if I don't see any other rise hand, so then thanks Elias again for the very nice talk, and I will stop the recording here.